Hi, hello everyone. This is Trimadi N. Padma Priya, Assistant Professor of Statistics, Sri Sharada College for Women, Autonomous Salem. Today, my topic is Basic Principle of Experimental Design. Before going to the Basic Principle of Experimental Design, what we have, what we are going to uh, see in this video is what are the different phases of experiment, what is experiment, and what are the different phases of experiment, how we can conduct the experiment, and what are the basic principles of experiment. So in this video these are the four topics we are going to cover okay first we have we see the definition of design of experiment De design of experiments is a systematic efficient method that enables the scientist and the engineer to study the relationship between multiple input variable and output variable the output variable is also known as response variable and the input that is multiple input variable is known uh, is also known as um, Multiple input variable is also known as the independent variable. It is a structured approach for collecting the data and making discoveries. Let, let us consider one experiment uh, that is um, yield of yield of a uh, a yield of a paddy or a wheat it depends upon the multiple factors such as climate uh, water level and uh, quality of the soil and uh, quality of the seed so this climate fertility of the soil quality of the seed this all are the input variable that is also called as a dependent independent variable this independent variable it'll, uh, it'll directly or indirectly influences the uh, the yield of the paddy so that yield of a paddy is called the respond variable so uh, uh, this is the example for an experiment in in an, in conducting an experiment there are four process of design of experiment there that four process or four phases the first phase is planning an experiment and the second phase is designing an experiment and the third phase is executing an experiment Experiment and the fourth phase is analyzing an experiment. In planning an experiment, the first thing we have to uh, decide what is our dependent variable and the independent variable. In the, uh, as I told before, in uh, for in an example of uh, uh, paddy uh, paddy cultivation, uh, the different types of fertilizer will impact the yield of the uh, yield of the paddy. So, uh, in this experiment, first we have to plan what are the different types of fertilizer. First thing that is in planning uh, in planning say, phase we will decide what is the what are our independent variable yeah, and what are our dependent variable and uh, another thing is in there are if there are four different types of fertilizer uh, we can find the uh, in, uh, individual effect of uh, uh, each. Uh, each uh, uh, fertilizer and the interaction effect of the fertilizer whether this individual effect how it influencing the how it's impacting the yield of a paddy and uh, if any two fertilizer interact together and how it is impacted the uh, 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 yield of a paddy this can also be studied in the design of experiment so the, in this planning uh, in this planning uh, uh, phase we have to decide what is our dependent variable and our independent variable and the thing and the third one is where we have to uh, where we have to where we are going to conduct an experiment and what are all the uh, basic requirement we need for an experiment this in this planning phase we will we will decide what are all the uh, things we want we want to conduct an experiment in designing phase there are multiple design available for conducting an experiment for uh, in our situation in for our uh, situation we have to select an appropriate design and in this designing phase we have to select what is our confident level what is our uh, confident level statistical confident level and power of this experiment everything to be considered in the decided in the design phase and third one is executing phase that is what we plan and designed what is what we plan and what we decided in the design phase this can be executed in the field in the execute, execution phase now in this we have to uh, we have to uh, the, the, we have to apply the principles of uh, basic principles of uh, designs in the uh, practical field and uh, for example in uh, conducting an experiment to know the impact of uh, different fertilizers on the yield of 
paddy uh, we have to uh, first select the experimental area in that experimental area we have to uh, apply the all the basic uh, experimental uh, and uh, principle uh, we have to uh, uh, apply the basic principle of experiment in the field and then we have to conduct an experiment this conduct uh, this experiment can take uh, months or years and uh, different time periods so after completing this experiment we have to extract the numerical data numerical data and that numerical data is further converted into further converted into a mathematical model and that mathematical model is analyzed and from that analyzed analyze analyze analysis a proper decision can be uh, extracted so these are the four phases of the experimental design first thing is planning and second thing is designing an experiment and third one is uh, what we have planned and designed that is executed in the field and from the execution uh, from the execution the numerical data is converted into a mathematical model and that mathematical from that mathematical model we have to uh, uh, we, have, we will predict uh, we will make the decision and make the prediction also the next purpose of design of experiment to is to model the process response once we have narrowed down the key input we, we want to know to we want to create a mathematical model of the process this model can help us to understand how the input variable affects the response that is first once we consider what are our independent variable next we have to uh, develop a mathematical model from that mathematical model we came to know how we came to understand understand what how how much the input variable affect the response variable the third one is to uh, the per, third one that is third purpose is to determine the optimum condition for the process once the identified once the identified the factor that affects the output uh, we need to determine the optimum level of inputs that will lead to the desired output the goal could be maximize minimize or achieve a target level of the response variable in our experiment of uh, in our experiment of a uh, yield of paddy uh, uh, we want to we want to maximize the field so that we will uh, study which level of the input variable should be increased or decreased or uh, so that our response variable also increase so the optimum level of input will also be derived uh, will be derived from the mathematical model the next thing we see is experimental planning that is the planning phase the practical steps needed for planning and conducting an experiment include recognition the goal of the experiment the choice of the factors choice of a response choice of the design analysis and drawing conclusion that is the first thing is what is the objective of an experiment the first thing we have to decide is the objective of an experiment the next one is choice of factor that is uh, what are the dependent uh, that is independent variable at what levels we are going to select uh, that thing we have to decide and third one is what is our response variable and third uh, fourth thing is choice of a design which appropriate design to be used and fifth one is we have to conduct that experiment from that uh, experiment we have to extract the numerical data that numerical data is further uh, analyzed using statistical analysis or statistical tools and uh, from from that statistical analysis uh, more conclusion and recommendation can be made so for example uh, let us consider an uh, uh, consider an experiment there are um, that is uh, conducting an uh, consider an experiment of a uh, uh, yield of a milk so uh, practically a yield of a milk from a particular breed breed of a cow can be influenced by mostly what we are feeding to the cow so uh, 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 what are the feed we are giving to the cow this mainly influences the uh, yield of the milk we can give different uh, kind of uh, feeds to a cow like um, paddy and um, uh, there, there can be multiple feeds uh, like uh, uh, rice uh,
Now we see the basic terminologies involved in experimental design. The first thing is experimental unit. Experimental unit is the physical unit that receives a particular treatment. For example, a plot in the field. It is essential that the allocation of treatment to a particular experimental unit should be at random. The experimental unit is the individual entities that are assigned to and, the, and that receive individual application of a factor level. That is, for example, a human subject is assigned a certain pill for a treatment and a pen full of young turkeys is assigning a certain food. Uh, then, the experimental unit is an experimental study, a physical entity that is primary unit of interest in a specific research objective. Generally, the experimental unit is the person, animal or object that is subject of the experiment. Next, what we are going to see is treatment. Treatment is what we want to compare in the experiment or what we want what we are going to test in the experiment. It is consists of the levels of single factor or a combination of levels of more than one factor or of different quantities of an explanatory variable. The next the next what we are going to see is block. Block is a group of experimental units that show some similarity or homogeneity between each other. Random allocation of treatment to units within block reduces the experimental error. Block is nothing but the, the whole plot is converted, is, is divided into small, small plots. That plots will have the same fertility of these, uh, will more or less have the uh, same fertility or uh, uh, of the soil so the whole plot is uh, divided subdivided into small small homogeneous units uh, that is called block the next one is yield the measurement of the variable under the study on different experimental unit are termed as yield that is um, for example the yield of a milk uh, yield of a paddy uh, so that different uh, treatments are occur, uh, are apply, uh, are alerted to the uh, experimental unit and that outcome is uh, uh, measured that out outcome is called the yield the third one is experimental error there is lot of things that you might hear people refer to as error in an experiment but in reality there are only a few things that fall into that category Category. First, remember how I said that human error is not an experimental error the, because human error are avoidable. For example, for, for example, uh, <coughs> human errors are avoidable and controllable. Uh, therefore, uh, it is not considered as a part of natural variation that occurs within the data. Of course, you need not you need not you need to be very careful as possible because our mistake will certainly affect the outcome of the experiment so the first uh, the only thing is this experimental error can be controlled that is that human error can be controlled the, uh, but then what is the experimental error? Experimental error is the difference between the measurement and its accepted value. For example, the weight of an object is rarely an exact measurement. You may get on the scale and see a value of 160 pounds, but in reality, our weight may be 160.11 pounds, which would be a slight difference between the actual value and the measured value. This this difference between these two values is called the experimental error. Next thing is uniformity trials. In uh, what is meant by uniformity trial? In this, in in in, in this uh, in this in an experiment, particularly in field experiment, field experiment, in order to have an idea about the condition of the proposed experimental area, uh, a trial known as uniform uniformity trial is performed. In this, a short duration crop is grown under uniform condition by dividing the whole area into a smallest unit to determine the shape and size and number of a plot in a block at the same time of or at the time of harvesting the entire field divided into smallest unit of same size and shape and the prod produ produced from each unit is recorded separately the this uniformity trial is performed to know which area of the block is uh, performing very low and which area of the uh, 
plot uh, block is performing good so that the which areas yield is high and which areas yield is high so that that particular um, since we are applying the uniform it, uniform condition all over the uh, blocks uh, we can uh, perform this uniformity trial to know the to know the condition of the uh, proposed experimental area this will control the experimental error uh, while performing the uh, experiment next thing what is next thing what we going to say is principle of experimental design that is there are three basic principle of experimental design first one is randomization second one is replication and third one is local control the first we see what is randomization randomization is nothing but allotting the allo allotting the treatment to the experimental unit in purely random basis that is assigning the treatment or factor to be tested to the experiment unit experimental units according to definite law or probability is technically known as randomization it is the randomization in its strict technical sense that guarantee the elimination of systematic error it further ensures that whatever error component that still persists in the observation is purely random in nature this provide a basis for making a valid estimate of random fluctuation which is so essential in testing the significance of genuine differences this randomization is used to completely reduce the uh, experimental error next thing is uh, next basic principle is replication replication is the repetition of experiment under identical condition but in the context of experimental design it refers to the number of distinct experimental unit under the same treatment that is the same treatment is replicated um, n times or odd time to reduce the error this replication with randomization will provide a basis for estimating the error variance in the absence of randomization any amount of replication may not lead to a true estimate of error the greater the number of replication greater is the precision in the experiment so if we increase our increase our number of replication the experimental error will be low so that they, we get a greater precision in the experiment the next thing is local control local control is local control means the control of all factor except the one about which we are investigating local control like replication is yet another device to reduce or control the variation due to extraneous factor and increase the precision of the experiment if for instance an experimental field is heterogeneous with respect of soil fertility then the field can be divided into smaller blocks such as plots which in each block tend to be more homogeneous this kind of homogeneity of plots ensure an unbiased comparison of treatment means as otherwise it would be difficult to attribute the mean difference between two treatment solely to differences between treatments when the plot differences also persist this type of local control is to helps to achieve homogeneity of experimental unit will not only increase the accuracy of the experiment but also helps in arriving at valid conclusion in short it may be mentioned that while randomization is the method of eliminating a systematic error in allocation um, thereby leaving only random error component of variation the other two replication and local control try to keep this random error as low as possible all the three however are essential for making a valid estimate of error variance and to provide a valid test of significance this local control is nothing but the whole whole uh whole experimental area is divided into uh, homogeneous blocks because the so fertility of the soil will not be equal in all the experimental area it it reduces or increases in any direction this fertility of soil may uh, increase or decrease in any any direction so first we have to identify on which direction it uh, it uh, it move it, it moves that means the fertility gradient how it moves towards which direction we have to find out for that we 
we will perform a uniformity trial under uniform condition uh, under, under uniform condition in from the uni, uniform trial we can conclude that uh, the uh, we can uh, understand the fertility of that particular experimental area uh, on, on knowing the uh, fertility gradient of that experimental area we can uh, divide the whole experimental unit into smaller blocks that blocks uh, with the, that blocks with uh, uh, we can divide the homogeneous we can divide the whole experimental into homogeneous blocks and uh, that uh, blocks will reduce the on dividing the uh, dividing the experimental area into homogeneous block this will reduce the experimental error so basing uh, using this basic principle that is randomization replication and local control on the whole on using this three condition we can reduce the experimental error so 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 only this three principles are considered as the basic principle of experimental design So next, uh, thank you for being patiently listening to my lecture. Thank you so much.